Hello, Rick Tobin, uh, Premier Hotel Realty, and this is the Hotel Hop Happenings podcast. And I've got some a uh, couple of great guests here. I got my friend John Norcross, who is a, uh, a broker in uh, in Texas and has a long family history of uh, custom contract furniture in the in the hotel uh, in the hotel field. John, hello. And hello, also, Rick. <laughs> hello, Glenn. Maybe a little lag there. We also have Glenn Hausman from No Vacancy, a uh, prominent speaker on the hotel industry and uh, speaks at a lot of conventions, been quoted in tons of publications. I could go through them, but uh, then we'd, we'd have to be here all day. Maybe uh, if you want to give us a little bit of your background, but uh, we'd love to talk about what's next here today. Yeah, man. Well, I've been uh, I've been covering the hospitality industry for 25 years, and boy, is it the best business ever! And I'm so fortunate to be able to be a, a conduit to share information with the wider hospitality community. I do a number of podcasts and video series out there. Um, since the COVID crisis started, one of my podcast partners from checking in with Anthony and Glenn, who I know him is Anthony Melchiori from TV's Hotel Impossible. We do a daily show every day, talking to the biggest names in the hotel business to help educate and empower all the hoteliers out there to see our way through the future. That's awesome. I love watching that. We'll put the link uh, down below when we get this uh, put together so that people can find that. But uh, what we wanted to really talk about, we call this what's next. And, and a lot of my clients, my friends, my people I'm talking to right now, they're going through a lot of turmoil. It's a very, very difficult time, but uh, very soon, hopefully very soon, this will be history. Yeah. And the question is, what's the history going to look like? How are they going to help write their history? And, and how's the, the hotel industry, especially for boutique hotels, do you, what, what do you see as changes off the bat? Uh, well, you know, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Hospitality is all that it's about. It's just the way that we deliver the essential hospitality elements might be changing for a little while in um from right now into uh into the future boutique hotels though they're the ones that seem to be um having the most uh issues i think right now and i'm speaking specifically to ones in more urban centers than if there was a boutique hotel in a secondary or tertiary market i had on um jay stein the ceo of dream hotel group the other day and they're getting ready to reopen some of their properties in places like new york for example but they're still thinking and struggling about what type of business business there really is going to be for those particular type of hotels. And the reason why I say those particular ones is I'm referring specifically to urban centers, which I think are going to be the weakest for a while going forward. So I'd, I'd like to ask you about a couple of different aspects of the industry that, uh, right. that I think people are going to need to pivot and change on. Uh, first, uh, housekeeping, cleaning the hotel. How important is that going to be? How do you see that changing? I think just stop doing it all together. Just, just kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, it's changing. All the major brands, plus the American Hotel and Lodging Association, they put out, all put out a great list of new standards and protocols and procedures that we should all be following to make sure that guests aren't safe, but feel safe and secure when they're in, the, in your hotel over there. Fortunately, when I speak to most of the folks out there, we just addressed this with the COO of Intercontinental Hotels Group Americas just today, because really all of these things have been in place for a long time, but a lot of what we're doing right now is making things more visible. Of course, you've got barriers and face masks and those things, but a lot of what we've already been doing, just keep doing, but instead of doing it at 3 a.m., it's got to be in front. Of people and it's got to be uh, it's got to be done in a way that people can feel more comfortable to get some hotels gotcha what about uh, do you see design changes lobby furniture uh, breakfast bars those kind of things you see uh, long term yeah. changes absolutely absolutely everything is changing but don't it's going to be permanent and long lasting changes once covid is in the rear back to normal in my opinion but for the short term it's all about that physical distancing and we really choose to say physical distancing on no vacancy instead of social distancing 
because we're being intimate with people, just not being next to them, unless of course you know them. Um, expect in restaurants to have that limited capacity that's out there, tables more spread apart so people can be in their own pods, their own little groups of people, right? Um, when it comes to breakfast buffets, we were just speaking to um, the, uh, the, C, the VP of uh, operations with Atrium Hospitality today, they own 84 hotels. And they were talking about buffets. They're still going to have them. They're just going to do them differently. And that was a breath of fresh air to hear because we were hearing before buffets are dead forever. But no, instead of having everything together, they might have a station over here, a station over here, a station over there. Keep people separate, keeping the spirit of physical distancing while still being able to satisfy their expectations for hospitality. Glenn, check-in, check-out procedures, front desk oh, conferences. What, what kind of thoughts do you have for hotel owners on that? Uh, for, for, for now, we're going to see a lot more of that touchless mobile type of, uh, of check-in. And again, that's only because we've already seen that trend in the marketplace, so that will continue to accelerate. Mostly what I'm seeing right now, I checked in at a hotel myself on both Wednesday and Thursday of the week prior to recording this interview. And the big difference that they had? plexiglass in front, um, almost felt like I was going to a bank teller, you know, that sort of, sort of thing, or, um, you know, a, 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 or, or other places that use that kind of a system that's in place. Additionally, um, a lot of places have a table in front of that to create that extra more distancing and they'll put the credit card machine out, out front. But at the same time, I was in the state of Nevada, very different than what I'm experiencing here in New York. People were touching my credit card, taking my credit card, using my credit card, and that was just the way it is. So there's going to be different things being done in every permanent? single jurisdiction around the country. What's that, John? Do you think it's permanent? No, these, these absolutely not. No, nothing is permanent when it comes to any of these okay. COVID measures that we're taking. That's, that's the good um, news. It, one or two yeah. things is going to happen. Either we're going to uh, find a uh, you know a cure or a, a shot that we could all take, a vaccine that's going to get us past this, or I think um, this is what's already happening, is that society has decided we are done with this, we are moving on with this, and no matter what happens, whatever that fallout is, we are going to deal with it, but we're certainly not going to take a step back to where we were two, three months ago. Okay. So coming from you, that's very encouraging. Yeah, I listen, that's being in Las Vegas amazing. last week, being so a let me ask you this, opening, what about... Uh, what about, what about conferences and things of that nature? We've been hearing people talk about, uh, you know, conferencing via Zoom as we're doing right now. Uh, do you That's think right. it's going to adversely affect conferencing and so forth? I'm going to give you a really bad answer. Yes and no. Yes, it's going to change some things. No, okay. it's not going to change a lot of other things. Um, I think, and uh, this is something that I've just really started to think about because I keep hearing this question over and over again. Human nature means people want to connect. Conferences are critical for networking. You cannot create a conference that has the same depth of experience on online as in person. Now, I'm getting ready to launch my own Hotel Reboot Podference series, but it's really highly educational to educate and entertain and empower hoteliers for this uh, for the next six months, what the changes are going to be. But I certainly don't have any expectations that any of the folks participating in this are going to be able to network, come together in any sort of real way, like you and I, John, had together over drinks at conferences in the past, for example. Mm -hmm. We're going to be missing that. And because of that human need and because of our desire to do better in our careers to network, there will there will be a place for events. There will be a place for small events, medium-sized events, and possibly even bigger size events. Because as I said, we are deciding society to move past this. There will be a vaccine at some point, and we'll get back to a, uh, a regular normal. Not a new normal, a regular type of normal. Now, certainly people are going to use Zoom conferencing for certain things. But me, my hunch is I'm already seeing um, different programs like Slack and other productivity tools to help teams communicate better, right? There's even a product called Teams out there to help people communicate better, right? So instead of me calling up Joe on the phone to talk about something, something, we're going to have these face-to-face -face kind of conversations, right? I don't think it's going to supplant me and Joe meeting in a city to talk about overall strategy and whatever it is we need to do. It's certainly not going to change the fact that I might need to, uh, to fly to a city to close that important deal 
It's not going to change the fact that I need to go to certain events to support friends, family, whatever it might be. So we're in a dark time now, but there is light on the horizon. And one day it's going to be really bright. We're all going to need to put on those proverbial sunglasses. So big question that, uh, that hopefully you can help with is marketing. How's Mark, should people be doing marketing differently right now? Uh, what, do you, what, what are the three things you think that they should be doing now to get through this crisis? Right, right now, it's all about messaging of feeling safe and secure when you're on the property. Make people understand that when they decide to get into their car and drive to your hotel for a few days away, mostly leisure right now, or almost entirely leisure right now, or medical and government, then they want to feel safe. They want to get away from all of this stuff that they've been dealing with, right? So if you could tell them the protocols and procedures that you have in place, what you are doing to make sure that they will be safe when they are with you, that's how you're going to win business. Your marketing plan should also be focused, since we are talking about road trips and drive into business now, nobody's getting on airplanes, not necessarily because they don't want to, but there's no flights. So you've got to focus on road trip business, right? So what are you doing to appeal towards guests that have already stayed with you that live within a couple hundred miles or any new business opportunities you have within two, 300 miles, a three, four, five hour drive from your hotel. That's where you're going to be making money right now. That's what you should be focusing on in the summer of 2020. So, so Glenn, being a little bit specific to my local community, I'm here in the South Florida area, Fort Lauderdale area. Right. Our uh, boutiques have been very dependent on travelers flying in from especially out of the country. Uh, yep. We've got two big ports here. We've got uh, Fort Lauderdale, the port in Fort Lauderdale, and, and we also have Miami. Uh, a lot of ships were going out until very recently. A lot of, a lot of tourists were coming here. Uh, now we're talking to our hotel owners about marketing to people driving into the area. Uh, That's right. You see, uh, you see, how do they keep in touch? How do they show people what they're doing that aren't here yet? How do they twist and, and, and market to that different, uh, that different niche? Do uh, you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. I, you know, if, if you're marketing to drive to business, um, what are – what are they going to experience when they come to your property? Think like your customer. Chances are they've been, they've been cooped up for three months plus, right? So because they've been caught up for these three plus months, they're dying to get out. They're dying for you to signal the things that they can do once they get to you. I believe pools are open in Florida. You should be communicating that message, right? That, that's open. What else are you doing to make sure that people can feel safe in their own pods so you can say, hey, our pool deck only has 50% capacity right now. Make sure you get a room at this special rate that ensures that you can save a seat over at the pool. That sort of thing. Really connect with the emotions that they might be feeling, with the fears that they're having. Ameliorate those fears and create a reason for them to want to come to you so they can get rid of of all that stress that they've been feeling and they could come and recuperate with you. Okay, I got a sensitive topic now. Some, uh, right. some of the restaurants we go into now have a COVID surcharge and certainly the hotels are having to do a lot more work. A lot of every business is having to do a lot more work. They have more expense to uh, keep their That's staff right. and guests safe and, and have, uh, and have uh, chemicals and, and do all to have the shields like at the bank teller, like you said. Uh, so it's costing them a lot more to do business. Do you see them uh, having to compete on rates to get, get traffic back? Or do you think that rates are going to go up to compensate for that, those costs? I think that you will see people competing on low rates, but I also see that as a huge mistake. And for everybody that's listening or watching this, Understand that dropping your rates is not going to increase demand. Nobody that feels unsettled during this period of time is going to say, oh, I can get this room for $20 cheaper. I'm now going to take a, uh, something that I previously thought was a health risk. All you're doing is making your eventual recovery a lot harder. It's better. It's smarter. It's safer to run at a lower occupancy now, though that's counterintuitive and you're afraid about paying your bills but you are going to have such a harder time bringing that pricing up to the levels that you think people should pay 
six months from now because people aren't going to allow you to make those jumps in price over and over and over again. So stick to your pricing, communicate effectively what you're going to be able to do for people when they're there, make them feel comfortable and think about ways that you could upsell them on the food, the drink, the other experiences that you have on property and try really hard to not have a COVID surcharge if you possibly can. Though I'd rather see a COVID surcharge than a resort fee or an energy energy surcharge. I think people are more open to that right now, but I also think those other types of surcharges are the things that people get offended by. I, and I totally agree with you. I think that pricing model is a race to the bottom to compete on price. And uh, we do tell our people, you know what, uh, uh, be the guy who charges a little more to, to keep because you're keeping people safe and people understand that and appreciate that. And in, in our society, they realize you get what you pay for sometimes. Right. Great. Anything? Where are we, about, where are we with? Go ahead, John. The pips and things like that. What what what's going on with the ownership? With uh, it, so suppliers. I mean, are, are suppliers still in business, or what? What's the upshot on pips? <laughs> suppliers are still in in business, uh, believe it or not, and a lot of them are doing well. And um, yeah. Though all the major brands, for essentially, I don't think of any that have not done this and pretty much put up all or put up all of their pips till next year. The fact is, we are about to enter a period of a lot of brand conversions. Is going to be my guess. Stuff that didn't work, that was working fine four or five months ago, is no longer going to work. And I see a lot of brands right now behind the scenes getting ready to reshuffle how they're thinking about bringing on new properties into their system. It's not necessarily going to be about new build, but it's going to be about changing flags. And of course, there's going to be plenty of new builds or record numbers with that. But I do see stuff shifting to people changing flags and thereby requiring those pips, right? So I may need to get a new sign for whatever brand I have today. And they may have said, wait another year or two. But if I switch to another brand, well, I got to get that new sign. I got to get new this. I got to get new that. I got to get all the other things that are associated with being within the line of that brand. I've already seen uh, companies like My Place Hotels rolling out another new brand that's geared towards the conversion market. So, in the hospitality industry, things are always vibrant. Things are always happening. It's just the way that they're happening is a little bit different. And hotel industry suppliers need to be a little bit more smart about how they're going to be make, making money in the future. Okay. Two last things, Glenn. Uh, any Final thoughts you'd like to give a hotel owner that uh, we didn't address here? Uh, final thoughts, yeah. You guys have the power within you to be successful. You absolutely do. Things may be changing, but you're smart out there. You can engage with your customers. Now is the chance to get that market share that you've been hoping to get for so long. But don't do it at the expense of cost. Do it by rising, raising the bar of hospitality and raising their messaging to these people. Reach out to them, let them know you are there for them and don't make it be all about sales, 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 right? So get out there, communicate, you're gonna find success, stay strong and your business will be healthier in the long term if you aren't foolish and aren't dropping prices because you're scared. I saw this in the last recession, I saw this in the recession beforehand, people got scared and I know, if you're a mom and pop business, it's your whole livelihood, look man, I lost 75% of my business at the beginning of this, but it doesn't mean that my services are any less valuable to people that engage me in business. So I'm not going to lower my prices 50% just to get the cash flow. I'm going to try to be patient. I'm going to wait and I'm going to make it happen and work with your creditors, work with all those people, because if we do it together, we're all going to make it out to the other side. Just be strong. So speaking of, of cash flow, and I, I shortchanged you a little bit in the beginning by uh, not uh, not getting in deeply into your background, but I'd love to uh, also let you give you the opportunity to tell people if they need to get a hold of you to speak at uh, at a function, if they want to sure. if they want to hear more, how do they get in touch with you, and how how can you help them? Yeah, you can find me. I'm at uh, Traveling Glenn online, um, NoVacancyNews.com. Easiest places to, uh, to find me or just send me a note, Glenn at Rouse.media, R-O-U-S-E.media. But uh, look, I understand that you may not be having that huge event right now. And sure, I may, uh, I may be a speaker at all those big events, but we could do stuff together for your virtual events in the short term. I can bring the messaging that you need to help educate and empower your teammates to be more successful as we enter this, uh, this, this new era. So, Thanks for allowing me to do a shameless plug, guys. I really appreciate it.
Thank you. And John, hey, if somebody has a hotel they want to sell in uh, Texas, you're in the Frisco area or somewhere else, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, my number is 972 793 would like to add that I would like to add that your, uh, your attitude and what you brought to the table is very encouraging, very enlightening, and I think that uh, if people hear, I should say, when people hear this, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a right. light in the dark. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the, really the, biggest issue, the biggest issue that we have right now is ourselves, the mental state that we're in, and whether or not we're willing to take a proactive approach and work our butts off to find success or sit back and allow life to control what we are. The issue that we've had over the last so years, changed, a lot right? of young professionals out there that have never experienced a downturn. They've gotten used to doing things a very specific way. A lot of times taking calls and getting the business that way, not having to get out there. You need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to try new things. I've got a lot of different irons in the fire. I mentioned I'm starting that, that conference season, that conference series soon. I've got a nice audience, so we're going to be um, setting up some uh, merchandising. I've got some other stuff in the works as well that's really appropriate for this new era. So if I can do it. All of you out there can do it. There's endless opportunity out there if you just apply yourself and make it work. So Pivot, and I, I think the, the, the thought is that the economy is what you make of it. And uh, as long that's as you right. pivot, you work with it, uh, there's always, even though one door closes, there's other doors that you can knock on or you can open with a crowbar if you have to, but there's always opportunities out there. Uh, right. So uh, this has been- Rick, Rick, let, me add to, let me add to that real quick. Every horrible, adverse thing that's happened to me in my life has led me to where I am today. All right, and today's not the best example, but led me to <laughs> March 1st, right? When things were still okay, and my business was successful, and I made a lot of, uh, a lot of progress in it. I'm going to do it again, right? I've gotten, I, I got fired from a job once, and I figured out what I did wrong and became a better human being. I didn't blame other people, right? I've Only had once? jobs that have just been eliminated. I've gotten tired of doing the same old, same old, and I wanted to take things into my own control and destiny, so I started my own business four years ago. So whatever door closes, it's not an end. It really is a start of a new beginning, a new beginning of what you make of it, a, be a, a beginning that you can control, you can dictate with your actions, your behaviors, and lots of hard work. None of it's easy, but nothing in life comes easy that's really worth it, isn't, isn't that the truth? Great, great thoughts, great Hello. advice. Bravo. This has been Hotel Happenings. Uh, I'm Rick Tobin from Premier Hotel Realty, and we'll put all everybody's contact information uh, below when we post it. And I appreciate both you guys for uh, coming in and giving your sage advice. Thanks, Thanks so much. So much. Mm -hmm.